Today, let's take a look at what I think is the absolute best field day logger. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now, I suppose it's a pretty bold statement to say this is the absolute best field day logger, but as of June of 2023, this is my new favorite for multiple reasons. Primarily because it's cross-platform compatible. It's built on Python, so it will run on Linux, Windows, or the Mac. It also will run on the Raspberry Pi, and it has network capabilities. Now, I love to use hammers for uh, logging when I'm doing POTA activations, but the one thing that never got built into the hammers app was the ability to network stations together on field day. And for a lot of people, that is absolutely critical. This piece of software has everything in it that we need. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to Mike WB8ERJ. He's the one that turned me onto this application, and he also writes a fantastic blog. You can find that at mikestechblog.com. Let's go ahead and head over to the computer. I'll show you how easy this is to get installed, and we'll cover all of the basic features and see if you don't agree with me that this is one of the best out there. Okay, so we're going to be walking through this super simple installation process. I am running Linux Mint on the Jankopotamus or the Evolve 3 laptop. The one thing you do need to make sure you have installed is going to be uh, Python at least version 3.10. If you're unsure of what you have installed, you can run uh, Python 3 space hyphen hyphen version and press return, and you can see that I have Python 3.10.6 installed. On the Raspberry Pi, the uh, 3.10 is not an option out of the repository. You will have to build that from source. I'll leave a link down in the description below of a web page that I found. I did not try this on the Pi because I will be running uh, the Evolve laptop on fill day this year, but I did find those uh, instructions on how to build that from source, so I will leave a link to that down in the description below. Provided you're running at least version 3.10, this is as simple as pip space install space fd logger. Let's go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of seconds to install. Okay, so that gathered up all of the dependencies that we should need for this. And you'll notice right here, it tells me that it put that file in my .local bin directory, which is not in my current path. That's okay, that just means we're going to have to move to that directory to run that application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch tabs here and you'll notice that I'm already in this .local bin directory. Just in case you're not and you need a little help with the command line, uh, if you run CD, that's gonna take you back to your home directory. If we run CD space dot local, that dot or period in the beginning is critical. Uh, forward slash bin and go ahead and press return. That should bring you into the dot local forward slash bin directory. Now, if we run the ls command, you will see that we now have fd logger installed. So let's go ahead and run that from this directory by using dot forward slash fd logger. We'll go ahead and press return takes us just a couple of seconds to get everything booted up. The first thing you're going to be greeted with is an area where you need to input your call sign, your class, and your section. So in this case, I'm going to set this up as though I was using it uh, alone by myself. I am going to leave you a link to where you can find all of the documentation on this particular logger in case you want to set it up and maybe do networking across uh, your field day site. But we'll just go ahead and give it KM4ACK. Uh, we're going to tell it one alpha and my section will be Tennessee. So let's go ahead and click continue here. Now let's make that screen a little bit larger so that we get 
a nice big picture here to look at. Now, you will want to set a few things when you first come in here. You can go ahead and pick your band. So we'll just say that I'm going to work the 40 meter band. I'm going to work the mode, either CW, phone, or digital. So of course, you guys know I'm gonna work digital. And I'm going to set my power here for, eh, let's give it uh, 25 watts for this particular demo. Now, if you made a mistake on something when you first uh, set this up and you needed to change your call, or maybe you want to run the club call, you can come right down here to the bottom, go ahead and double click on that, and we'll use uh, K4FUN, which is my club call here. Uh, and then, you know, if you needed to make a change over here, you could obviously change this as well. And then also you can change uh, your uh, section over here. Now, logging is ridiculously easy with this application. You're just going to come up here to the top and we're going to enter a call sign. So I'll give it w 4 RPW. We'll give it a class of uh, one echo and a section of Tennessee. You'll notice when you start typing the first two letters over here, it will give you recommendations right down here in the main window. Uh, let's see if it'll do that for Florida. Maybe not. So let's start with an S here. So we could have South Texas. We could have South Dakota. We could uh, have South, I believe South Florida. Yeah, South Florida is also in that. So if you just started with a single letter there, it will give you recommendations uh, down there in the main window. Uh, back to my example here, we're just going to use Tennessee and I'm going to press return or enter on the keyboard. Now, what you can see is all of that information right up here in this top window. So the call, uh, the call sign of the operator I made a contact with, we get his class, his section, we've got the date and time, and then we've got the band. Oh, that's something I wanted to show you guys. This actually includes rig control. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and show you guys how to set up rig control. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, FL rig for the 891. And let's make sure that that is, yep, it looks like that is grabbing everything correctly. So let's go back down here to the settings icon right down here in the bottom right. And we'll click on that. Let's go ahead and come over to cat control. And then we're going to click on FL rig. And that should take care of it. That should be everything we need to know or we need to do uh, to get FL rig and rig control set up. So now let's go ahead and click the save button and let's try another call sign. So this time we'll use uh, W0MET. We'll give him a uh, one echo and then we'll also give him Tennessee. Now let's press return this time. And you will see that the frequency was recorded correctly. So 7126200. Let's take a look at my FL rig. And you can see right there that that all matches up. 7126200. So now we have rig control uh, set up and running. I'm going to go ahead and move the frequency as though I was chasing uh, stations on fill day. So now we're at 7208200. Oh, Let's go ahead and give that uh, a try again. This time we'll use N4 AMH and we'll give him one echo Alabama. Let's go ahead and press return. And sure enough, we got the correct frequency pulled into our logs. So guys, that's as simple as it is. This is a absolutely fabulous program. Uh, that is cross-platform. Because it runs with Python, or because it's built on top of Python, rather, we can run this on Linux, including the Raspberry Pi. We can run this on Mac, and we can run this on Windows. Now, real quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. And if you want to set this up for uh, networking on your field day site or at your field day site, you can go ahead and come over to this Group Operation tab, and this is where you would enter the data for connecting all of those computers together. Again, I'm going to leave you a link down in the description below so you can read more details on that. This is the only laptop that I have set up currently 
or I could go ahead and try to set up a server client uh, relationship here. But I am going to leave the link and point you to some good directions. Now, let's take a look real quick once we're done with fill day at generating the logs. So I'm going to come down here to this generate logs button in the bottom right hand corner and go ahead and press on that. And it says that it's saving the Cabrillo file to k4fun.log and save the ADIF file to fieldday.adi. So let's go ahead and see if we can run those files down to see where it saved those two files at. I'm going to go ahead and just open my terminal window and I'm going to kind of guess that it's going to drop them into this .local uh, forward slash bin directory. Now, I don't want to exit out of this particular window here, this terminal session, or it will close the application in the background. So I'm just going to press Control shift t on the, t uh, on the keyboard, and it will give me a new terminal window in that same directory. If we run the ls command, aha, I was right. You can see the field... Nope, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Be sure to get the right one here. Don't confuse these. But here's the fieldday.adi, which is the ADIF file. And then we've got the kf 4 uh, our k4fun.log file. So let's go ahead and cat out that k4fun.log file, and you can see that it's got all of our information in here. Let's do the same thing for the catfieldday.adi file, and it looks like everything has been pulled in there correctly as well. So what's your opinion of this logger? Leave it down in the comments below. I do want to give mad props to K6GTE for putting out a fantastic piece of software. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.